Does this give everyone else like major Call of Duty 4 vibes? Like just it just looks like Chernobyl. Whether it is Chernobyl or not, I have no idea. But if anybody does want an amazing series to watch, then I 100% recommend the Chernobyl series. It's like four episodes, five episodes long, maybe. Um, incredible. Really, really enjoy it. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing well today and welcome to Abandoned Town. This is a collaboration work actually between uh, Bobby aka Concept Breath and Kyle Watts aka WDMX. Now both of these guys originally come from MX Simulator so it's nice seeing both of them linking up and uh, putting some more work over onto MX Bikes. I'm quite intrigued to see this actually because just looking around like that, that car is incredible. Is that, that's got to be 3D scanned surely. I don't know. I don't think it is 3D scanned. That is, that looks incredible. Oh my god. Okay. Um. So texture wise, really, really good job going on so far. Uh, there we go. Concept graph and uh, WDMX, big Ws all around. So I think it's just the one Nationals track by the looks of it. I'm just trying to reach out here, there, and everywhere, just trying to make sure that I don't miss anything on the flyover. No, I think it's just the one National track, but it does something that I really, really enjoy when tracks do on this game, which is going through objects like underneath. It feels so much more immersive when you're actually taking part in the environment, if that makes sense. There's a lot of bits of this track that seem to have, I guess, split lanes, so not 100% split, but you know, stuff like this, where it's got different jump faces depending on where you take off. So it's going to be interesting to try all of the uh, different little lines. And it just, it's really, really cool. I don't think we've had another track in the game with this sort of aesthetic yet. So. Big W's all around, and I like the scale of it as well. Like, look how tall these buildings appear just in the distance. So big, big W's. Well, let's, let's go spin some laps. Let me stop waffling, and let's just hop straight into it. For all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, FXRRacing.eu, to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. The weapon of choice today is also going to be the gas gas. And having a look at the start straight here, I don't think that's 40 gates. That looks like maybe 25 to 30 ish maybe, maybe yeah maybe more so 30 so not a full 40 man lobby by any means but when it comes to pay tracks to be fair that we very very do uh, rarely get full lobbies unless we do a particular stream for them so let's see what this is all about let's see how this goes and i'm not going to spend like at like 20 30 minutes on this it'll be nice and short and sweet one maybe like 12 to 15 ish minutes or so reason being is uh Firstly, if I don't go off to uh, A&E in, in the ambulance. Uh, reason being is I'm currently uh, recording this in between the heats and the main event of the final round of Supercross. Uh, so if I'm going to just throw a guess out there. There's no no uh, no main event stuff has happened yet. I've just seen all of the heats. So, so far, the heats, if you don't want spoilers, by the way, then don't then click off and go and go and watch stuff but the real life racing is happening right now for me and uh, in the heats so kitchen's just won his heat uh deegan won his heat uh, uh lawrence won his one jet lawrence and then the other one i can't remember off the top of my head who won the other one it's gonna annoy me sexton i think it was sexton yeah so it's uh it's gonna be interesting i think it's gonna be a very very interesting night of racing uh it, for people who i want to win I would like Kitchen to win the ch championship on his side. I would like Tom Vial to win the championship on his side. And I, of, of course, want Jet to win the 450 championship, which I don't think there should be any issue with that at all. I think he should get that wrapped up, no problem. Same with Vial, although Vial is looking a little bit shaky. Not going to lie in that heat race. Not uh, kind of performing as expected. And I think it's just going to come down to whoever gets the better start out of uh, Kitchen and Hampshire on who's going to get Dubsky, I'll be completely honest. I think they're so so close in pace today the track does look a little bit on the one line side not this one that i'm riding right now the real life track which seems to be a common theme this year which i don't really know what the the teams need to do to make it feel a little bit less one line and actually open the track up to some more passing opportunities i'm not sure if it's just the the stadiums that they're riding in seem to be a little bit on the smaller side maybe where they're, they're, they're getting what like 50 ish second lap times which I still think are quite short. I much, much prefer Supercross when it's longer lap time. So when they do the, I guess, outside stadiums, I don't think, have they done it? I don't think they've done it this year from Daytona, have they? It'd be like a Daytona, for example, where the lap times are quite long for like last year and especially over the COVID period. We had a bunch of the long lap times where it's like a minute 30-ish for a Supercross lap. Some people might think that's too much. 
I personally like it. I think it creates a little bit more of a skill gap, like a difference in speed for them. And I just think that's the best way to go because lap times are so close at the moment. It really is just get a good start and then ride a wide bike and hold on for dear life. So hopefully all goes well for them tonight. I think it should be a big W. In terms of outdoors news for MX bikes, uh, the only extra news I have so far is first of all the gas gas feels very very lovely and I'm using an outdoor setup right now which on some tracks feels like it works well other tracks not so much and I think the biggest factor is if I ride a track like Argentina let's say that isn't the roughest in the world uh, some rough but nothing too crazy then it's very very capable if I then go and take it to the extreme side of things, if we're riding on a GP of France at uh, Villars sous Ecotte, then some of the bumps on there do like really make the suspension bottom out hard and give you a bit of a weird kick. So it's just uh, it's interesting. I think it, it generally might be a case of needing different suspensions for different tracks, which is something that I've never done before. I usually just pick something up and, and rock it and just leave it as it is. But it seems like each season that goes on, the competition gets faster and faster and there's going to be a point where i'm even going to be struggling to get top fives after a while it is still region locked which kind of, well it's, it sucks for me but that is just one person's opinion maybe for other riders people maybe that are on the bubble with ams and pros it's probably a good thing so you get more of a chance of making it into uh, whichever region you're you're playing on uh, but yeah for me for a content perspective it kind of sucks can't lie I, I would love to just be able to do both and race against all of the best people in the game at any given point but i also get it it is what it is and then from the track operation side of things uh, if you are out of loop stone rider is making the height maps i believe hell machine is doing the texturing side of things and then jv is working on the objects i could have got hell machine and jv the wrong way around but I am aware, I think Stone Rider is the one doing the actual high maps himself. So, I'm sure his techniques and uh, the tracks won't be similar to 2022. But if you want to practice, I would definitely advise trying out some of them 22, 2022 tracks that Stone Rider created, as opposed to last year's TFC tracks, because they're going to be night and day difference. So if you want something that will actually help you in terms of muscle memory, then I think the 22 tracks are the way to go. Uh, one or two of them are free. I know Thunder Valley, so round three is 100% free. I can't remember if any of the other ones were, so I mean, go give it a go. Thunder Valley, I think, is the roughest one of the 2022 season as well, so it'll give you a good idea of what to be in for. I expect the tracks to be quite brutal this year. I don't think they're going to take it too easy on us. Uh, I think the, the quicker the games get in, the more and more the tracks need to be uh, just brutal to slow us down. So I'm very, very intrigued to see how it goes. And I think it should be the most exciting outdoors series that we've had so far i mean gps are always really exciting for me but i know that it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea so i know a lot of the us player base for example are all, all that into the gps mostly probably because they just can't relate to it if that makes sense but uh, for myself i find it really really fun but then any sort of race on this game I, I tend to enjoy more 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 these days than I used to. I used to get so much more frustrated by doing poorly, and now it's just a case of, eh, dust, dust yourself off. There's always next week, and we'll see how it goes. But I was, I was really, really happy, really, really happy to get my fourth win of the Supercross season at the very last round. Didn't expect it at all. Didn't feel great in qualifying. Made a lot of mistakes in the heat race and threw away a heat race win. And then just got... I, did, I didn't even get a good start in the main. That's the thing is uh, got together with uh, a couple peeps and you know netcode being netcode we all kind of thought we had a wheel on each other when we didn't and then pushed each other really far out uh, luckily i managed to rejoin part of the seas as if i am uh, moses and then hop back on the track and by the end of lap one i was in fourth with just a couple of people in front of me and luckily all of the top top speed guys weren't any of them people they were they were behind now don't get me wrong it wasn't a walk in the park by any means uh, Tyler was a good second to two seconds depending on the lap faster than me I have no idea how people go that fast through very very deep rough I don't know if it's a setup thing or if it's just confidence or more practice in that those conditions but I felt like if I tried going any faster than I was I would have been straight over a berm or the front wheel would have tucked or I would have been kicked over the handlebars something along those lines because the track did get very very brutal it was quite deceiving actually thinking about it so in calling that I, I thought the track was very simple like a little bit on the easy side and really hard to uh, make up 
or lose a bunch of time on each other just where there was kind of one long rhythm and that was it and then everything other than that was kind of really hugged as far inside as you can in all of the corners like 93 turns and and the ruts uh, but come race time i think they ran 0 0.2 in road and yeah the, the track has changed so much that the berms got quite deep and, and bumpy in the ruts as well which was interesting because the ruts were smooth originally but then by the end of the race around the entirety of the berm it was just like constant chop which i haven't seen it do before usually the, the berms and the ruts just get faster with a road so i'm curious if some rider went for the effort of masking those bumps to two form in if so that is a, a big w on his part and then the jump faces they develop these really really weird kicks and i think one of the hardest things to do on this game is to judge the road that happens on jump faces to know how far you need to send it so obviously we've all got this built-in muscle memory we all do the practice and the qualifying for tracks and we know then how fast we need to hit each jump to get up and over it no problem but then halfway through the main event that will all go out the window it will all completely change you'll be hitting jumps much slower than you were before but somehow jumping higher and further just because of the way that the road kicks you and i think i actually done an okay job of dealing with that for once usually that's what makes or breaks me and i'll over jump something can mess up an entire rhythm or maybe come up short or even go over the handlebars but i, I coped with it okay so a very very good end for the season couldn't ask much better than that of course uh, the only thing that could have been better throughout the season is if I didn't miss three rounds, then I would have had a chance of getting second overall rather than the third place that I did get. But it's one position at the end of the world. It's, it's not the end of the day. I don't believe they're doing cash prizes for this. I'm not too sure. I know outdoors is going to be uh, like gifts and items rather than money, uh, just for legal reasons, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what these Supercross prizes are actually like. I guess I'll, I will wait and see. Wait and see what happens on that front. But uh, yeah, Supercross, no. Supercross is over. Motocross now isn't starting until the 31st of May. They are doing it the week following the real life event for the first time ever. Reason being is we can then race the real versions of the tracks, the real layouts. Uh, to give you an example of, this, of what this means, last year when we rode Redbud, we rode the 2022 layout because the track had to be made in advance. Yet the 2023 layout had a different uh, run up and couple of corners going up to La Rocco's Leap. So we didn't get to experience that. So this year, it's being, I guess every race is being delayed a week. So we can be true to life, ride the exact track they ride, and there should hopefully be zero complaints. I don't mind it at all. I don't mind it being a week behind. Uh, I think the reason in the past, which is the same reason that Sim do it, but, but before the actual race, is from an excitement perspective. So people are really hyped up and in the mood for it. But I don't think it will affect it at all. I think it'll be really good fun and it'll be nice to get proper real real replicas for that year and that track so i'm excited for it all round. Uh, this track i've kind of shut my brain off i'll be honest just while spinning laps here and it's very very fast very flowy and it's got a nice good couple of ruts in each corner the jumps i'm not sure if it's just the gas gas that feels lighter in the air than the husky does usually or what um but i feel like i can get this bike pretty backwards slash upside upside down off each and every jump really really flowy and uh texturing wise looks absolutely fine no problem at all and then model wise and detail and just overall like the environmental feel top 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 class really really good like just even having the uh the ferris wheel there as well just gives it proper proper chernobyl vibes and if that's what they were going for then they've definitely definitely succeeded uh, so to both bobby aka concept graph and miss carl watts aka wdmx I would like to thank you both on this collaborative effort and uh, I hope you guys always have enjoyed. What is your, here's your question of the day. If you made it this far to comment down below, what's your favorite type of track in terms of scenery? Do you like tracks? Obviously, do you like the tracks in stadiums? Do you like like nighttime tracks? Is there any particular one? Do you like the whole, I guess, like desert slash Southern theme of tracks? Or do you prefer things that are a little bit more out there? I mean. Uh, we have tracks by like King and X, for example, which is surrounded by lava. Uh, we've we've got all sorts of tracks on the game at this point. So let me know what is your favourite kind of track to ride in this game. Uh, leave that down below. If you did enjoy, please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It'd be very much appreciated. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to. I'm going to go and watch the final Supercross race of the season. Catch you next time.